War in Full Swing By early Universal Century 0079, the One Year War was in full swing. Being numerically at a disadvantage and lacking strategic resources enjoyed by the Earth Federation, many believed that the Principality of Xeon, just a small nation space colony, would capitulate by early to mid-year. But this perception changed after the Earth Federation was violently introduced to a groundbreaking piece of Xeon engineering, the formidable Zaku. For the initial months of the One Year War, Earth Federation military scrambled to keep up with his mobile fighter as the Zaku-1, and later the Zaku-2, quickly earned a mythical reputation for space combat. This war machine appeared to be everywhere in space, had unprecedented mobility, and could easily down anything the Earth Federation threw at it. More concerning was the fact that the Zaku was capable of wielding a variety of weapons, to include the terrifying 280mm bazooka that was nuclear capable. Hard to believe. Earth Federation Intelligence had been informed of the existence of a new Xeon mobile suit back as early as Universal Century 0078, when just four Zaku 1s obliterated an entire squadron of Earth Federation gun cannons on the Earth's moon. This was mankind's first recorded mobile suit battle, known as the Battle of Mare Smithy, but it is also known as the Mare Smithy Massacre, or the Mare Smithy Tragedy, due to the overwhelming Xeon victory. Dr. Toronov Ninovsky, a witness to the battle and one of the most fundamental scientists to the development of mobile suits, was a complete shock and awe as the Zaku's performance was far greater than anything he thought was possible. Nevertheless, Earth Federation had little response against Xeon's new war machines and were completely confident that whatever Xeon had concocted would be far inferior to their own technology. It wouldn't be until the shocking attack during Operation British that they finally started to notice. As it turned out, the Zaku-1 was far more capable than anything they had anticipated. The Zaku-1 was a formidable war machine, extremely fast, nimble, with an incredible agility. Early fleet battles against the Zaku-1 resulted in tragedy, as the agile mobile suit easily outmaneuvered Federation defense formations and sunk their ships with impunity. Earth Federation military were also quite green when it came down to effectively dealing with the Zaku's. Zaku pilots were already well experienced with countless hours of flight time under their belts, leaving them with a very aggressive outlook in battle. This was clearly evident at the Battle of Loam. Despite the Earth Federation space fleet massively outnumbering their Xeon rivals, the Federation found themselves at a significant disadvantage. Federation battleships such as the Magellan and Salamis class battleships easily outgunned the Zaku's, but these war machines were completely incapable of defending against the flyby Zaku attacks and would easily be sunk. The Federation did not know it at the time, but the Battle of Loam was also the introduction of the new upgraded model, the Zaku-2. The result of this battle ended with an overwhelming Xeon victory, all due to the performance of the Zaku's. The Earth Federation lost more than 80% of their space force. The capture of General Revel, commander of the Earth Federation space forces, and ultimately convinced Xeon High Command that an invasion of Earth would be successful. inside the war machine. Early development and research into the Zaku revealed that it was an engineering marvel and technologically far beyond any available weapon at the time. Xeon military leaders wanted a machine that prioritized range, versatility, and maneuverability over everything else. So, the early Zaku prototypes were the world's first nuclear-powered mobile suits. Because of the thermal nuclear reactor, the early prototype Zaku essentially had an unlimited power source. Additionally, designers gave the early prototype the iconic mono-eye camera, which was used in conjunction with several other cameras mounted around the mobile suit, incorporated laser sensors, infrared sensors, and a powerful computer system to facilitate the pilot's performance and give the pilot an excellent visibility of the battlefield. Lon Ko, a Federation ace pilot, would later describe the overall opinion of most Federation pilots when he said, quote, I have never fought against anything that could match the turn rate of the Zaku. The Zaku had ruled the roost totally and was the finest mobile suit in the world until mid-0079. The Zaku-1 had a 180 degree turn time of 2.9 seconds, a max acceleration of 0.63 Gs while carrying an impressive armament of high tension steel alloys, machine guns, assault rifles, bazookas, and S-mines. Moreover, the Zaku-1 had previously unseen range of any type of mobile suit, 
being able to fly 8 hours at cruising speed and 3 hours at maximum speed. To achieve these numbers, the Zaku-1 also incorporated some of the world's most advanced aeronautical advances such as mounting thrusters underneath the feet and skirts along the legs, waist, and back. Later, the upgraded Zaku-2 would replace the Zaku-1 as Zeon's main mobile suit. The armor of the Zaku-2 was improved with spikes and a shoulder shield, and the thermonuclear reactor was upgraded for better speed and performance. The new model also introduced external power cables along the legs, waist, and head for overall better responsiveness. Additionally, like the Zaku-1, the Zaku-2 would have many variants to fit the combat needs of either space or earth. The Zaku-1 and Zaku-2 also had similar operating systems which allowed pilots to easily transition to the new system without the need of extensive training. Shortcomings and Aging Technology On March 12, 0079, Earth Federation forces captured a down MS-06F Zaku-2 in the Nevada desert. This Zaku was from Xeon's 3rd Terrestrial Mobile Division, which took part in Xeon's Earth Offensive along the eastern seaboard of North America, and even took part in the capture of New York. This was the most intact Zaku to be captured during this time, and allowed Earth Federation scientists and military leaders to extensively study and test the machine. It was methodically tested, and its performance probed under various conditions, and was even taken apart for thorough study. Fortunately for the Earth Federation, the examination and tests would reveal a series of serious flaws that would bring the Zaku's domination to an anticipated end. The Zaku was fast and agile, but could not showcase both advantages simultaneously. As the Zaku reached maximum speeds, the control surfaces which allowed it to turn became stiff and unresponsive, significantly diminishing its agility. In their quest to keep this machine fast and mobile, Xeon relinquished some surface controls which meant that the faster the Zaku traveled, the less responsive it can become. Now, armed with beam weapons, Federation pilots, most mass-produced Federation mobile suits, started to be equipped with mounted shields and beam weapons to engage the Zaku's at greater distances. The downfall. The jaw-dropping performance of the Zaku's against the Earth Federation military during the initial months of the One Year War cannot be sustained for long. One reason for its inevitable deposing was that the Earth Federation had a far more capable wartime industry and a much more extensive deposits of strategic resources that allowed them to quickly research, develop, and produce new and more powerful mobile suits like the RGM and the variants. The RGM and their variants were designed with more advanced technology and with more powerful weapons such as the beam rifles and beam sabers. Xeon had little strategic resources in space and a minimal manufacturing capability. Thus, Unlike Federation mobile suits, Xeon could not afford to polish the Zaku's flaws faster than they were becoming obsolete on the battlefield, such as protection against beam weapons and the use of an obsolete pile analog system. Additionally, despite creating programs such as the United Maintenance Program to bolster their crippling logistics, Xeon was unable to provide critical repair and components for damaged Zaku's, which were badly needed during the late stages of the war. From mid-0079, the once dominant mobile suit would have to continue fighting with its weaknesses being more evident as war dragged on. Xeon's shattered hope of a harsh but brief war had other disadvantages. After the failed invasion of Earth and the complete military expulsion of Xeon forces back into space, their once methodical and exceptional pilot training program that was designed to deliver formidable pilots was unable to produce the required skilled pilots needed for the battlefield. By the war's end, Xeon High Command was in a desperate position to even allow wounded pilots to continue service in order to maintain an acceptable wartime fighting strength. Soon, Federation pilots would easily down Zaku's with advanced beam weapons and outclassing them with the same advantages that the Zaku's once enjoyed. The Zaku's rise and fall is a testament to the ever-changing nature of war. The Zaku and their variants represented significant innovation in the mobile suit technology, but they were far from invincible. Ultimately, the once formidable Zaku would share the same fate as Xeon in the One Year War, first emerging as a rising sun, only to be eventually distinguished by the unrelenting might of the Earth Federation. <laughs>